Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, special report on aviation and the real estate market. I have with us a subject matter expert, Zeb Freitas. He is president of ZFC uh, Real Estate in Boca Raton, Florida. Zeb, welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell. Hi, welcome. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Well, Zeb, I got to say, you have such a great background. You clearly have the real estate side, which we'll get into in a second. But I also recognize this one attribute about you. You're a private pilot. That, that's got to be very exciting. Yes, I am. Uh, it is. It's, it's, I mean, look, real estate's exciting. I feel like real estate's in my blood. But uh, flying like anybody who flies, any pilot, it's what we care about more than anything else. Um, but interestingly, the two actually do um, complement each other. Um, and How when, so? So when you look at, especially commercial, this wouldn't apply to residential real estate, but when you're looking at commercial deals, you know, you don't limit yourself to your local neighborhood. Uh, if you're looking for an office building, it, you know, it could be in your town, it could be uh, two counties over, it could be the other side of the state, uh, it could even be, you know, out of state. Um, and you could spend all of your time you know, driving to places to look at properties that are a no-go. Um, and it, you can easily consume all of your available time just moving around looking at opportunities. But if I could jump in the plane and hop over to the other side of the state and look at a property and be back by noon, then you know I can look at a lot more opportunities and uh, in the same amount of time, you know. Well, definitely an intersection, and it sounds like so. So, I'm, I really would just want to stick on this pilot side. I have a son who is going into college. He's going to be studying aviation management as well as uh, being a pilot. He's going to train to be a pilot, and uh, very exciting stuff. And and it's one of those areas that. But it's very smart of him because there is this dramatic pilot shortage, which I'm sure you hear about all the time. Now, I know you're a private pilot, but what's the story with the pilot shortage right now in the aviation market? Right, so I think that there's a lot of um, different factors playing into the pilot shortage, but in, in short, um, supply and demand. Um, so when we went through COVID a couple of years ago, the airlines pretty much shut down. They let go a lot of pilots. They did early retirement, uh, all kinds of incentives to, to get pilots off the payroll. And now the demand has come back stronger than ever. Um, unfortunately, you can't turn on the pilot supply as easily as you can turn it off um, because you need thousands of hours to qualify for a commercial license. Um, and uh, there's training. Um, there aren't that many new pilot licenses issued every year to keep up with the, the demands from the airlines. So I think they kind of, you know, shot, shot themselves in the foot by, by letting yeah. the so your pilots are the key to the airline industry. You get rid of them, and then uh, um, you know, you know, you know, so. Yeah, no, I'm sure of that. This is how I understand it. With the, with the training regulations that are that are taking place right now because it's it's very difficult to be a pilot um mainly because you have to put in so much time the the practice hours i think that's why a lot of those that are training to like crop dusting things like that to to really uh, try to to pad those hours that they're that they're going to need that are required to fly commercial aviation uh, planes the uh but I, what i understand is that years ago there was a a tragic accident in buffalo new york and Senator Chuck Schumer, after that it happened, Senator Chuck Schumer imposed some very stiff uh, training uh, regulations, but whereas pilots need to have X amount of hours, X amount of time, the experience before they even get into the cockpit. Do, do you think that that might be slightly overkill or what do you recommend as far as, uh, because I know that the FAA has that mandated age in 65 where you can no longer fly, but do you think that there should be changes that way or maybe even on the training side? Right. So I think that those two um, variables are, you know, one, one is on the front end, one is on the back end. I personally think it makes a lot more sense to play with the retirement age than it does to um, mess with the, the barrier to entry um, because I feel, um, well, first of all, I, I know a lot of pilots who are in their 60s who are perfectly healthy and 
flying is their passion. It's all they've done. It's all they want to do. Uh, they know more than I'll ever know about flying. They have tens of thousands of hours flying, you know, airliners, and they can't work. Um, but then you look at the new guys with 1,500 hours, and like you said, most of those hours are in a crop duster. Um, yeah, sure, you have to get you know a, a few hundred hours in a jet, um, but that's you know the jet time is the expensive time. Um, you know, you could fly a little Cessna, uh, crop duster, or whatever for very, very um, little money, or you could even get a job flying one and get paid not much, but get paid to accumulate those hours. But the jet time, that's where it's hard to get your break, to get your opportunity, unless you want to pay for it yourself, to build those hours. Um, you know, but that's important um, because flying a crop duster, it, it, you know, is not the same thing as flying, you know, an airliner. Um, so I don't, I, I think that those requirements on the way in should not be lowered at all. Um, but I do think that someone who's 65 or even 70 or even above 70, if they're healthy, then, you know, age is just a number. Um, commercial airlines with a, a class two medical, they have to go every year um, for a medical. Um, if they're healthy, they're healthy. They certainly know how to fly. Um, let them keep flying. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Well, I, I do agree with you on that one. I do think that the age of 65 is is very young uh, as far as forcing people out of a job. I can understand. I mean, we have a president that could be 80 years old. I don't understand how you could be a pilot and be asked to leave. But that's a topic for another story. So, right. so let's let's switch topics a little bit because I you are a real estate guru. You're an expert um, on the real estate side. And I do know that it's you know we're going to pivot right from that plane talk all the way down to real estate, but I but I do I'm intrigued by both. But what I what I'm looking at with aviation is the 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 professional shortage, but I don't see that on the real estate side. And you have been in this market for a while. You you have a number of people that are agents right now that are pushing properties. But I know in the South Florida region that's probably booming, but the rest of the country doesn't seem that way. Is it a supply and demand issue there as well, or higher interest rates curbing that that demand? I mean, what do you think is the current state of the industry? So, from the perspective of a real estate buyer or seller, or from the perspective of a broker, because it's different. well, actually, I want the entire scope of the of what I'm seeing because I'll tell you this: when um, I'm in New York, and so the big thing in New York is talking about how many New Yorkers have actually gone down to Florida. They're transplants. They're getting up. They're saying, I've had it. I've had it with the higher taxes. Cost yep. of living is crazy. The weather stinks. Why yep. not go down to Florida? I know it's hot down there right now, but let's be honest. In the month of February, when it's snowing and the raw winter's around, you'd rather be in South Florida. So, down, so with that, I know there's big demand for real estate in Florida, but is it everywhere? Do, can you speak on that coast to coast? I mean, because I just don't see it right now. Um, so uh, listen, I, I've been very successful um, in the real estate uh, industry. Everything I have, I have accomplished somehow or other through real estate, be it from earning a commission from selling real estate or from owning real estate. Um, everything I have is one way or another from real estate, including my entire um, pilot hobby is all sponsored by my real estate activities, right? So I'm a big fan of real estate. And to me, it doesn't matter. It's cyclical. Um, it could be um, you know, booming, it could be crashing. It doesn't really matter to me as a, 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 not even as a broker. As a broker, certainly it doesn't matter. But even looking at it through the eyes of an investor, you have to have a, a long-term view uh, when investing in real estate. And um, you know, prices go up, prices go down. Uh, it always, always goes on to set new highs. Um, you know, a crash, they say, is like 20% drop in price. But mm -hmm. what people forget when prices are dropping 20% is that in between every 20% drop, you usually have a 100% run, right? <laughs> so prices go up 100%, they give back 20, then they go up another 100%. So to me, if you're buying in a down market, it just means that you're dollar cost averaging and maybe, you know, you, you don't want to be buying when, when everyone's overpaying. That's when you want to be selling, right? So are your clients concerned with, the higher interest rates that we've seen from the Federal Reserve. Yeah, for sure. Um, because it, now, uh, 
this is from, um, I'm going to answer this for, from the perspective of commercial real estate more than residential. Um, residential has different drivers. It's more about, you know, budgets and, 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 you know, household income and things like that. But from a commercial perspective, it's an investment. So money, you got to use leverage, first of all, to make commercial real estate really make sense. Uh, when you use leverage, that's where financing comes in. So now you have to look at your interest rate and you have to compare that with your cap rate. Um, right. The way I like to look at it is the difference between the interest rate and the cap rate is your profit margin, right? So, um, you know, a couple of years ago, 2020, a six cap was considered an acceptable investment for many people. But today, if you're going to pay seven or eight percent interest, then you can't really accept a six cap because you're going to be upside down. Right. Right. That makes a lot of sense. So I think, you know, interest rates go up, then cap rates have to go up. And for cap rates to go up, prices have to go down. Well, let's, uh, let's leave it there on that note, because I do want to follow up after the break, talking a little bit more about the commercial side, because okay. that is an issue that there, there's clearly deflation in that segment of the real estate industry. Really like to get your thoughts on that. So with us today, we have Zev Friedis. He is the president of ZFC Real Estate. You can follow him or go to his website at zfc.com for all of his information. I'm sure you have your listings on there too, Zev, which is a smart idea these days. So that's wonderful. But we'll be right back with all of you right after the break. Yeah, there's time to Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's last call out radio. Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What? Welcome back to Buy, Hold, Sell, Special Report on aviation and the real estate industry. And for this block, we're actually going to be talking about, strictly about real estate. I have with us Zev Friedens. He is the president of ZFC Real Estate in Boca Raton, Florida. And Zev, when we left it in the last break, we were just talking about commercial real estate. This is an area that is of concern because you have so many people, because of the pandemic, we're just simply... At, at home, working from home. There wasn't a need to go back into the office. And now we're seeing this across the country as far as commercial real estate being vacant and there are depressed prices, prices that are happening. Are you seeing the same thing in South Florida? Because I do know so many people have moved there, but what about businesses? Are they actually leasing space? Right, so people continue to flock here. They've been doing so even long before COVID. Um, I've been down here 25 years. And, you know, I, I always like to say I've looked at thousands and thousands of commercial deals over the years. And I turned down 99.9% you know, .9 of them. Um, and uh, looking back over all these years, I wonder if I wasted my time because honestly, I should have bought all of them. <laughs> right? Because um, what's the saying? Rising tides lift all ships, right? And Florida has just been on a boom for as long as I've been here, 25 years. Um, when, when I first moved here, it wasn't really um, booming that way. I, in fact, I remember my first investment property um, 25 years ago was a residential property. And the closing agent literally laughed at me uh, when he noticed that my address on the closing statement wasn't the property address and asked me why. And I said it was an investment. 
And he said, maybe in New York, real estate's an investment, but not in Florida. <laughs> so uh, That's great. I certainly got in at the right time. It was before the big gold rush, but it's been going on for 20 years. Um, so, um, you know, it's not that way everywhere. Um, ob obviously, um, people are coming here from other states, right? So, um, yeah. Yeah, um, there are places in the country where you could look at real estate values now, you know, look at a particular property and it's not worth more than it was 10, 20 years ago. So you certainly don't want to overpay for something like that. And 20 years from now, you still can't get your money back. Whereas in a market where things are just going on to new highs every year, sometimes you know, it, squeezing out every penny isn't even important. It's more important just to get on the train, um, even if right. you're year it'll look you'll look smart right <laughs> <laughs> now you got that right well is the is the growth taking place just in on the atlantic side of south florida i mean i know that there are pockets of florida that i mean maybe even on the gulf side i mean there's not a lot of of expansion that's taking place or or am i incorrect with that statement um certainly south florida is booming um it, you could even argue it's a bubble but we'll see um, but other parts of the state are up and coming for sure. Um, a lot of the appeal of Florida is applicable anywhere in the state. In other words, if people come here because of um, the, the business climate, the, um, the, the policies, um, you know, no state income tax, um, you know, low cost of living, you know, all, all these reasons that people are leaving New York to come to Florida apply in uh, Tampa as much as they do Miami. Uh, in fact, I think Tampa is one of the next areas to explode. I've had to pick, I'd say Tampa, um, Orlando, although it's already happening in Orlando, uh, but Tampa, uh, Jacksonville, uh, there's so many good cities in, in Florida that are still relatively reasonable if you're coming from New York. Um, right, right. If you're coming from New York and you want to go to Miami Beach, um, uh, you know, you, you you could do it and you can improve your quality of life, but you're not going to lower your um, housing expense by all that much. I mean, you know, prices on Miami Beach are astronomical, but if you're moving from New York to one of these other cities in Florida, it, it's still uh, very much um, appealing as, you know, as appealing as South Florida has been for the last 20 years, still is in these other cities. Yeah, they Bloomberg actually had a, a study fairly recent that they published that showed that if you are making seventy five thousand dollars a year, now this yeah. is in New York State, right. so that's the entire state, not just the city, but think of upstate Central New York, you know, Syracuse, yeah. Rochester area. Yeah, sure. You, if you move to Florida, you can anticipate saving twenty five thousand dollars a year because of lower taxes and the cost of living is lower. Now, granted. You're not going to South Florida. You're not going to Miami Beach, but you're going to other areas of the state. If you're making six hundred thousand dollars, that number jumps to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in savings. I mean, that's crazy that it's that much of a of a difference. And plus, the weather is better, so well, I can see well, why so many people well, are moving there. Sure. I mean, well, what's the um, personal income tax rate in New York? Uh, ranges. I mean, it really depends where you are. Plus, it depends on where you are in the state. So if you're downstate in the city or Yonkers, Westchester County, yeah, you're paying a much higher tax rate than you are, say, in Buffalo, New York. So but it really it really does vary. But it is high. But it's not just that. It's also food costs, gas costs. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And um, I'm in New York right now. And it's uh, it's quite it's quite high. And I know down in Florida, pockets of Florida, it's it's actually eye popping how much cheaper it is it's pretty crazy yeah, yeah. so let's so on the so just to continue on the commercial side are you seeing construction of commercial real estate in south florida uh yes very much so um um i can tell you i own some commercial properties that i need to have some construction work done on right now that i am having the hardest time getting contractors to bid it everybody's just booked out by a year and nobody wants to even bother competing on price because they have more work than they can handle. Wow, that's incredible. So it's clearly demand then that's taking place. It is. I mean, it's, that... it's kind of funny because, you know, when you own an office building, your tenants sing a different tune. Your tenants want the world because, you know, uh, I should, you know, be lucky to have them right now because nobody's leasing office space and 
and, and all you know this whole narrative. But then you turn around and the construction cost, the replacement cost of these properties is you know five times what what you, know, what you paid for the property. You couldn't replace it. Um, trying to build a new one, even if cost wasn't an issue, you can't even get the work done. Um, but yet somehow, um, you know, the office market is supposedly there. Uh, so I think that, you know, that, that will fix itself with time. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right about that. And it's interesting because when you start thinking about maybe not so much in Florida, but in other parts of the country, when you have depressed prices and you have real estate values that could be dropping. And, and if that's the case, then that's going to lower property taxes and then municipalities will end up taking a hit. I know in Florida, you're not seeing that. You did touch a little bit on the state policies that are going on. Do you really think that's a, a big driver as far as the, the, the policies that are coming out of Tallahassee as well as the lower tax rate? I mean, is that really what's moving the needle here? Um, I think so. Um, but I mean, you know, that's a political conversation. I have my political persuasions. I'm a big fan of uh, the state, our governor, uh, not a fan of the politics in New York. So maybe I'm biased, but I, I, I don't think I'm you know, that fringe to say that Florida is more business friendly. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with that. I, and it does seem it does seem business friendly. I mean, I know DeSantis is having a, his battles with Disney right now on various issues and Disney isn't backing down. That's a whole other story for an, another show. Yeah, and I don't really, yeah, I probably shouldn't touch that, but I'll just say that the issues with Disney should not be misconstrued into being anti-business because that's not what that's about. Very good then, it's a great comeback. I like that. And uh, and with, yeah, that's that's a great sound bite as well. So that is, that's wonderful. So that's great. Well, well listen, Zev, how can uh, people find you? I know we mentioned your your website. Is that the primary uh, point of contact for you? That's, that's the easiest way to get in touch with me. Our website focuses primarily on residential because um, residential real estate, well, that whole that's a whole different business, but that's all driven by online lead generation. So our website is focused on um, residential listings and generating traffic that way. Uh, but to get in touch with me, you can certainly find me there. That's fantastic. Again, I know you have a very qualified team of professionals that work there at ZFC and I, and they're all listed as well on that website. So it's zfc.com. Welcome all, all of our audience to go check it out. So Zev Friedis, thank you so much for joining us today on Buy, Hold, Sell. I can't, can't thank you enough for taking the time. I know the audience got a lot of knowledge out of this and uh, we definitely would like to have you back again sometime soon. All right, sure. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, Zeb. All right, you take care now. All right, and for the audience, thanks again. And please uh, check us out next time for another Buy, Hold, Sell. Take care. I want you to smash that like button. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.